I've heard rumors of men who disguise themselves as cocoon masters to poach game here. You may be one of them. Hmm. We must find out whether or not you're the real thing. lies ahead. Go on! Get out of here! Next time I won't go so easy on you! So, <laughs> the son of the Lion of Peril is even more talented than I had thought. I looked up the Calabas herb in my books, but in the end, I found nothing. However, there is a folk tale that describes a dust that wakes the sleeping. It is the story of a wondrous powder kept by a half-bird, half-man named Kikinok, who lives in the Dragonfly Forest. Perhaps that powder is brewed from the Calabas leaves. This is only a guess, and it's all I could find, but I think it is worth looking into. Here is the key to the Dragonfly Gate. You should have it. Better head straight back to the village and consult with Garai. She may know something about the tale of Kikinak. You must do your best before it is too late. The Divine Spirit defies the Great Father and throws off his shackles. He is now bound to the chains of freedom. So, even Chorus does not know. But I do remember hearing the tale of the Birdman. There is a similar story of divine spirits in Nagi legend as well. Elrum released his minions, the divine spirits, unto peril. And so they spent days bringing life to the forest and giving names unto themselves. 
Elrim warned. That creature is the beast of knowledge, and it will someday bring temptation upon you. The Divine Spirit so promised, and gave birth to the beast of its own image. Such was the birth of man, the beast of knowledge, as told by the prophet Guy. As the sands of time flowed on, the beasts bore children, and so continued to multiply. Soon a fateful day came to the forest. One of the divine spirits fell in love with the daughter of man, and so the promise was at last broken. Elrum punished the divine spirit for its sin by transforming it into a beast. Descendants of that divine spirit dwell still in the forest, and sometimes they reveal themselves to us. The birdman, Kikinok, as mentioned in the folk tales of peril, might be referring to this spirit. We should seek out Kikinok, the legendary birdman. Enter the dragonfly forest, but be warned, an average cocoon master is no match for the denizens within. And be sure to ask the old gravekeeper about the legends. He is the storyteller of Cyrus, and should know much about the fables of old. Doing divine magic is very tiring. Ugh. After performing a purification, I feel so sluggish. Our enemy we love, and for the tormented we pray. Grant us, the beasts of knowledge, the power to touch the spirit.
warrior of justice, return to whence we came, to the place of Elrum. Grant us our daily bread. You haven't seen my foolish son, have you? I bet he's out playing pranks with that no-good watchtower kid again. Tell him his old man said to stop playing in the forest, and to come home and do his chores!
Come again, when you can handle that weapon there. I gotta prepare too, you know. Just buying a powerful weapon doesn't mean nothing unless you ready it. You know that much, right? already. Here. I wonder if you understand. I have a fine view of the forest. I love the forest. That is why I like it here. When I'm here watching the forest, I need nothing else at all. Oh my, I almost forgot about the frolicking children. Their smiles are important too. It is said that the woodcutter wanted to test his own strength by felling the tallest tree in the forest. He hastily ventured deep into the forest in search. Meanwhile, the forest told the great tree of the woodcutter. The great tree sighed deeply, lamenting his foolishness, and he continued to sigh. And before long, the breath of the great tree became a thick and heavy fog which shrouded the forest. The woodcutter soon lost his way. He grew so tired wandering about that he soon took a short rest. Just then, sweet-smelling fluffs began to float down from above. All who would smell their sweet scent would fall fast asleep. The woodcutter couldn't help but to fall in a deep slumber. And there he lay, snoring great snores in the middle of the forest. For three days he slept. On the morning of the fourth day, a birdman flew down to where he lay. He spoke to him. I'm the strongest, you always say. One fight with me, if you may. But the woodcutter remained fast asleep. You can try to sleep if you must, but I shall wake you with my dust. As he spoke those words, the birdman sprinkled a glistening white powder upon the woodcutter. 
With that, the woodcutter sneezed a great sneeze and jumped to his feet. The surprised woodcutter shouted, Who on earth are you? I warn you, I am incredibly strong, and I will battle right now. The birdman replied, You can't defeat me, but if you do, we can be friends and I'll share my powder with you. It cures all illness and turns old to new. I got it from the forest people called the Yamu. The woodcutter tried to grab the birdman. But the woodcutter had been asleep for three days. He was too hungry to hold on. With one flap of his mighty wings, the birdman blew the woodcutter all the way back to the village. The woodcutter told the villagers all about the strange bird man, but not a soul believed him. From that day on, the woodcutter never again boasted of his strength. Understand? The divine tree of the forest is an incarnation of Elrum. You must never think of harming it. It is always watching over us. There are many other tales with the Birdman. It seems they all say that he hates fire. Perhaps he was barbecued in a previous life. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, we're gonna listen to this next one and then I'm gonna end the video. Um, when we come back in the next video, I am going to have the merges done. Or, uh, you guys are gonna tag along, I'm not sure. Because they made you? For the sake of the village? You must not think that way. Many years ago, the children of the village used to come to hear my stories. You were one of them. You always played the flute, even when you were a little boy. Even the rowdiest children would calm down when you started playing. And now, do you still like the flute? If so, then be strong and gentle like the flute. This is a tale of the kingdom of Gehenna Pali that stretched across these lands long ago. Once upon a time, Prince Menek, son of King Karis, set out with his vassals to hunt in the forest. But in the forest they were enveloped by a thick fog and the prince lost his way. Wandering aimlessly about, he happened upon a marsh from which grew an enormous tree. Thereupon he heard the sound of sobbing, but he knew not from where. He found a maiden sitting all alone. She was weeping by the marsh. I am Alcana. I just buried my mother here in the marsh of Uban, she said. And then she looked up at the prince he was overwhelmed by her beautiful eyes. The maiden stole his heart that day. It was truly a fateful meeting. Thereafter, the prince made frequent trips into the forest. Undoubtedly, he was paying visits to the maiden. The maiden had a strange power. She could talk to the insects and trees. Before long, there began a terrible rumor that the prince's heart had been stolen by a witch. One day the maiden spun silk from fairy cocoons and wove it into a beautiful cloth for the king. But the brilliance of that cloth cast a shadow upon the kingdom. 
The king was so enthralled by the fairy silk that he sent his soldiers into the forest where they ravaged for fairy cocoons. The fairies, still in their cocoons, were boiled alive. The king killed them so he could have their silk. The prince pleaded with his father to stop his cruelty, but the king was no longer the man he had once been. Prince Menek was charged with treason and imprisoned in the king's deepest dungeon. He was never heard from again. When the maiden learned of the prince's death, she cursed her fate and lamented the foolishness of man. She then cast herself away into the marsh where her mother lay. As she started to drown, a voice from nowhere whispered to her, I am Elrum. I shall grant you your wish. Tell me what you want, said the voice. The maiden told Elrum all that weighed upon her heart. The maiden said, Greed bears destructive knowledge. Its wicked power shall be the end of the forest. Our hope is lost. The beasts of knowledge shall never live in peace with the forest. The one light of hope who I so loved has perished at the hands of the beasts. I now go to where my love Menek awaits. Thereupon Elrum spoke again. So you claim that your true love was torn asunder by the greed and hatred of the beasts of knowledge? When light is swallowed up by darkness, I shall unleash ruin upon the land, returning all to the nothingness from whence it came. I have a firm grip upon the darkness in your heart. From that day forward, demons appeared in the forest, terrifying all they came upon, and the kingdom of Gehenna Pali fell to ruin by the swarms of Onibubu, locusts of apocalypse. The demons that haunt the forest now are the beasts spawned by the greed in man's heart. Life is for no one else but yourself. Just as I enjoy being here telling stories to the children. If you enjoy the flute, you should continue on as a cocoon master. Duty alone cannot bring forth a good tune. Always remember that. Come again any time. Oh, the wind is getting stronger. Know you that on days like this the sound of your flute shall be carried by the wind and heard far and wide. And each time I hear it, I shall pray for your safe return. <laughs>